hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. If you have a look at these cute chicks here, one thing you probably realize is that you have different types of colors. You've got a white one, a black one, brown ones, and a yellow one. And that's basically quite quite normal within the same species. So these all belong to the same species. Within the same species, there's often a lot of variation. And that variation has quite useful consequences. Because, for example, if there were a disease, right, a disease, then you might have four of them are dead because they don't have a good resistance against the disease. But one of them has genes which make it resistant. And this one survives. And then this one will pass on its genetics to the next generation. And then the next generation will all be immune to that disease. And so there is something beneficial when it comes to genetic diversity. And genetic diversity, when it comes to something like cloning or other reproductive technologies, often decreases. Now, cloning and other reproductive technologies often have their uses as well, their benefits. But often genetic diversity is something that is decreased. But the reason why I mention this is because there's a couple of these words get used in this dot point. Dot point itself says discuss the potential impact, just discuss the potential impact of the use of reproductive technologies on the genetic diversity of species using a named example of a plant and animals that have been genetically altered. And so we have to give two, two examples, plants and animals. And it says we need to use the reproductive technologies. So uh, again, you have reproductive technologies are cloning, artificial insemination, and artificial pollination. These were the ones that you would we could talk about. So we have to discuss the potential impact of these technologies on genetic diversity of the species and use a named example of a plant and animal that have been genetically altered. All right. So the first part is just talking about the overall potential impact. So we said that one thing is for certain almost is that genetic diversity in most cases will decrease, decrease. Because if you have a look at here, we often might hear, might hear this word gene pool. You might be confused, what exactly does a gene pool mean? Well, let's say we have these pigs here, and these pigs have each have two alleles. This might be alleles for their actual coat color. So we have a large B and small B. This might code for a mixture between white and brown skin or fur. We have two homozygous brown alleles and two homozygous white alleles. And this, yeah, the big B and small B, they're obviously they're co-dominant, so you have a mixture if they come together. But what that means is you have lots of variation. You have different pigs look all differently. And when we refer to the gene pool, what we mean by that is just the different types of alleles that are within the population, right? The population is all of these different species, are members of the species together. And because they have all the different alleles, if you put them together, we have a big variation of alleles that we can find within a population, right? But what would happen, let's say if we take this here, this one, and we don't have, we kill off all the other ones, or we don't want them, or we just don't have them, and we just make a copy of this one here. What would be the gene pool for if you have thousands of clones of this one? Well, the gene pool will obviously be strongly reduced. All we have is just the capital B. So all the small Bs will be gone because it doesn't have small Bs. So the possible combinations would be very limited. They would all have the homozygous brown. So we've decreased the gene pool if we have clones, or if we pick which ones we want. And sorry, you know what the gene pool is? No kind of, you know, this image I guess might help as well. But genetic diversity generally decreases with all of the reproductive technologies. But sometimes it increases, and I'll go over an example as well. But overall, it decreases because with cloning, we pick the ones we want, and we have the, the actual asexual reproduction. So the clones will be identical to the offspring. With artificial insemination or artificial pollination, 
we basically have more or less the ones we want. So we pick the trades we want. So favorable trades will be picked and all the other ones will be ignored. So eventually all of the actual offspring will have the same favorable trade. But it means the other trades are lost. And what you also know is that something that we consider a favorable trait, right? So something that we consider a favorable, favorable trait is not necessarily a favorable trait for the organism. And one example would be chickens. Chickens nowadays, we make sure that they grow really big, so that we have lots of meat. So our chickens nowadays, they grow a lot bigger than they used to be. Let's say this is a big chicken here. Again, my drawing ability is a very limited. Um, let's say this is how it used to be. And this, this, is, this is how they used to be in terms of their size. Their size has changed because we picked certain genes which make them bigger. But the problem is their legs haven't changed. So let's say these are the legs back before they were selected for. And this, these are the legs now. And what you can imagine is if you're twice the size but your legs haven't adjusted, that means you're going to have problems. You're going to have skeletal problems. So these ones are often, um, they can't move properly. So they can't move properly. And they just suffer. So chickens nowadays suffer a lot because of that. And that's often due to the fact that we've selected traits which we find good, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good for the actual organism. So one problem is that we might actually increase genetic diversity in some cases. So this chicken wasn't there beforehand, so we gave the new genes, we gave it new genes which allows it to grow a lot bigger. But the problem is these genes, these new, this new diversity isn't good for the chicken. It's not what it wants. So we have the other technology, which is making transgenic species. Transgenic species. What transgenic species are is when you have two species to come together. So for example, we might take genes from, from maybe a, an elephant and put it into chicken. That's a transgenic species. It'll still look more or less like a chicken, but it'll have genes from a... So a gene has gone from an elephant into a chicken. And it does increase diversity initially, right? So there's more diversity initially because that means that you know, there's a new gene which wasn't there beforehand. But the problem is because initial diversity might increase, but after a while, diversity will decrease because we're going to select only that one. We want to have only that one type of chicken. So and after a while, they basically almost become, they all have that, all have the gene. So initially we have included a new gene into the gene pool, but then after a while we, we made sure that every single organism has that gene and thereby genetic diversity decreases. So you should know that overall genetic diversity is often decreased and favorable traits that we consider favorable might not be favorable for the organism. So it might not help the evolution of the organism that we're giving them these traits, but it might help us. So that was the first part. Then we have to talk about a named example of a plant and an animal that have their genetics altered. So the example would be the Bacillus thernogenesis crop. This is actually, the Bt is a bacteria. So we've taken a gene from the bacteria and put it into a plant. And this is an example of a transgenic species. This is a transgenic species. So we have this Bt bacteria, which is resistant against disease, and we've put in the genes for that into the plant. Now that means that the plant itself actually becomes resistant to the pests, to pests in general, to pests. Because that's what the Bt bacteria does, it kills pests. So by putting the genes into our plants, we make them resistant to pests. Now one problem that might arise because of that is the pests themselves, because they're now exposed to the Bt so much, the pests might become resistant to Bt. That means that their defenses, the new genes are, are pointless, that's possible. And also, I mean, some other ex problems might be that the, the unknown consequences for the plant, right? because again, it might be, it might sound good. It might, okay, well, that's, that's useful. But maybe there might be a hidden problem that all the plants are then actually negatively affected. So it might be bad for the plants themselves to have this BT gene inside their genome, inside their DNA. And obviously, if, because we eat most of those plants, in many cases there might be plants that we eat, and that could have a consequence on the human health. Again, it probably doesn't. Like um, GM foods probably don't, doesn't have a, a problem with human health, but we are just unknown. It's, we aren't sure about it yet. 
So these are some of the problems that could arise when it comes to BT crop, even though they have their beneficial properties, such as that you know, they're resistant, they make the plants resistant to pests, but the negative might be that the pests then become resistant to the BT, or that there's unknown consequences for the health of the plant and for the health of the human. That's one example, that's when we put a gene into a plant, and this is when we put a random gene or a different gene into a animal. So this is again is a transgenic species. What we do is we have a gene that makes the antithrombin. Antithrombin helps us to clot, it removes clots. It removes clots and that's a gene that we have in our, in our blood. Right? So usually we make this to remove clots and what we do is we take that gene from a human and put it into a sheep. Right? So we have a transgenic species, put a human gene into a sheep and what that does, a sheep then produces antithrombin in its milk. So the protein that we that we need is then produced in the goat's milk. That's what we've sort of engineered. Now the good thing is that can be drunk by people who have antithrombin deficiency. So these are people who have a disease which doesn't allow them to make this normal antithrombin which we can make. And the antithrombin is important because it helps us remove clot. So by putting that into a sheep, we can just drink the sheep's milk. The people who have this disease can drink the sheep's milk and they'll be fine because they'll have antithrombin. But the problem is that yeah, at the moment there are unknown consequences for the health of the sheep. We don't know if that trait itself is actually beneficial. We aren't really sure. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just one of the consequences, I guess. So again, I cover the dot point, discuss the potential impact of the use of reproductive technologies on the genetic diversity of species. We said that genetic diversity often decreases, especially with cloning, insemin insemination and pollination. It can initially increase when it comes to transgenic species. There can be an initial increase because we've increased, we've introduced a new gene into a species. But the problem is after a while, we select for that same gene with all the offspring, which means after a while, genetic diversity will also decrease. It might be initial increase, but then it'll decrease. And also the problem is that favorable traits for humans might not be favorable traits for organisms. So by making these transgenic species, it's possible that we don't really do the animal or the plant a favor. It might kind of backfire. And examples were the Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT for short, BT crop. Uh, DNA from the BT bacteria is inserted into plants. So we take the bacteria DNA and put it into a plant. That's why it's a transgenic species. And it's BT that what it does is makes it resistant to pests, which is a good thing because now the plant can fight pests. But the problem, there are unknown health consequences for the plant and the human who eats that plant later. So we're still not sure if there's, you know, if there's going to be a problem. And the other example is the atrine sheep, which is also a trans, transgenic species. We take the human antithrombin gene, put it into a sheep. That sheep then produces the antithrombin in her milk. People who have the deficiency can drink the milk and be the cured from their problem. But yeah, we, have, we are not sure if there's consequence for the sheep by inserting a human gene into the sheep itself. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.